tracking a 20 kph 72 a lap i think so i've lost 400 i've done for a while <laughs> hello everybody i've got today the adi zero adios 5 i think normally people just call them the adios 5 now the adios line we're all basically the go-to marathon shoe for all the world records really up until the uh, nike four uh, percent came along so this is kind of the fifth iteration of the boost um version of the shoe and this is basically the shoe I used to wear for all my races including a marathon I did in uh, Italy four years ago in 253 in 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 the uh, in the Adios so I was key I uh, run my first marathon in the first version of the uh, the boost version of the Adios and I've had various versions before in fact I've tried on all five now they've been, been notoriously bad for coming up um, too short so I was keen to see whether the Adios 5 would address that and the good news is that they seem to have done and have actually made it slightly wider than uh, previous versions. I've done a run on the treadmill in Zwift, um, starting off fairly steady because I was a bit late and then building up to marathon pace, 14 kph, sub three hour pace for me. And then finishing off with a bit of a sort of a all out um, sub six mile for the end. And uh, they felt pretty good. I mean, the big difference between these and the um, Next percent is that so much less cushioning. Although having said that, in this new version of the Adios, they've got this new light stripe material, which I hope you can see there just about. Um, now that's basically a bit like um, the turbos, where they've got two foams blended together. So they've got the light stripe material at the top, it seems here, with a bit of boost in the heel. And if you turn them over, um, you can actually see that there's so much boost that runs all the way along. There must be a very thin layer of it underneath. Um, now, the thing about that is that it actually does, it has actually increased the weight slightly. So in my size, which is 12 and a half, these come up at 277 grams. Uh, whereas the Adios 4s, which I've got here, um, also in the uh, essential go-to black with uh, white stripes. This is the Adios 4. So these come up in my size, um, 265, and that compares uh, to the next percent in, in a 13. They don't do a 12 and a half in Nike at uh, um, 255 or so. Oh, my truck was moving there. Apologies for that. So uh, I think I, I thought I heard that they'd actually re um, reduced the size, but it seems not. So. These are the two uh, versions here, side by side. Um, I've got the Adios 5, I'm just lifting up here, and the Adios 4 in my, uh, in my right side, which will probably be the other side. So the difference is, um, also in the cosmetic things, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six eyelets, so seven eyelets, uh, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eyelets. So you've got more eyelets than most shoes um, have together. I mean, some shoes have only got like four eyelets, haven't they? Um, the tongue on the new version is very like a neoprene thing. It kind of reminds me a bit of the um, of the turbos. Um, so that's a very thin uh, bit of neoprene. It's quite good because it, um, when your feet get sweaty, then uh, I can feel that quite sweaty now because I did a, also I did a which you'll see in the uh, slow motion video. I did a, a lap flat out on the new Utopia track at uh, 20 kph. Uh, just to see how they look at top speed. Um, whereas the previous versions, they were quite thin, but a bit sort of something and nothing. They were just sort of like more that like meshy material. Um, now the new version is kind of, it's got a similar mesh, but it's more, 
it seems thinner and you can actually if you put your hand in you can actually sort of see your hand through it a bit so it looks like if it would get wet then it would probably sort of seep through whereas the uh, the other one was kind of, uh, the old one was more of a uh, mesh as well but it looks a bit thicker so it's interesting to note that the the old one was actually slightly lighter if you compare the side profiles there I've got the Adios uh, 5 on the bottom. Now, I don't know if you got to see that, but it does look like the foam is actually slightly thicker uh, on the new version. So um, you certainly sort of notice when you wear the Adios compared to the next percent or the 4%, how much less cushioning there does and how much more you feel the, the road on them, which in the old days, I was very used to that running sort of... Um, you know, I was around a 15 minute 5k runner, um, 32, 10k, 2, 33 in the marathon. I think when you're running at those speeds, perhaps you don't notice the road so much now. But when I'm running a bit slower now, I'm more like uh, 17s for five, uh, 5k, 30, 30, 37 for 10k, and maybe a sub 3 if I'm lucky. Um, I do find that the, you know, the next percent just provides so much more cushioning. So you feel like you're bouncing off the ground a lot more. Um, but I haven't said that, I'm also going a bit slower. Um, another thing, a big thing, another thing I noticed is that on the new version, there's actually much more room at the front of the shoe. And when I actually compare them, um, and if you can see that there, the, the next, the new version, is very hard to say, but the new version, the one that sticks out there, it's actually about half a centimeter wider. So when you put it on foot, the, um, it does feel like you've got a lot more room uh, relatively in the sort of the front of the shoe, the toe box area, which I think even for me with very narrow feet, um, sometimes I felt that because it was so narrow, the Adios, that it actually made it feel like the shoe was like really kind of short. So I'm quite pleased about that. So I just literally put these out of the box and almost ran straight out, flat out, straight out of the box. And um, I could actually tighten them up a lot more, but I haven't really tightened them up too much. Um, and there's a bit of wiggle room for me in the front. I mean, ideally, I'd probably like about a quarter of a size more, I'd say. But uh, it's not the end of the world. And I think, um, so when, when, what would I actually use these for? Which is a good question. I mean, I think, I think well, if I did like a park run that sort of has a bit of multi-terrain in it, or like a lot of gravelly trail, or things where you feel like you've got to sort of move around a bit, maybe a bit of mud. Um, you want something sort of low to the ground and light. Um, and even those that are a bit heavier than the next percent, you feel you've, you're going to be a bit more stable as you're cornering. So I think, you know, if there's, there are maybe some courses or if you go like an old railway that I do a lot of running on, where it's sort of part gravelly, maybe a bit of light mud, I think they would be ideal and I've used them in the past for those sort of sessions. Um, so, but I mean, I think, you know, these are really, at the end of the day, just sort of traditional flats. I mean, when you put them on, you just feel that, you know, you can feel the ground a lot more and although in the Edios 5, I don't know if they're newer, um, I just felt there was slightly more, slightly more under my feet at the toes. I also felt with the Adios 4 that there was so little material um, at the top of the shoe um, in this one here that you kind of feel like you sort of almost hit slapping the ground as you were towing off. There's, there's not much more there, but it does look like there's a bit more. And this, this light stripe material isn't quite so soft so um, maybe it's just it's a bit, gives a bit more of a feeling as you, as you toe off so but it's a very difficult to with just an initial treadmill run how they would shape up but I certainly think that um, I'd certainly say on the first try the Adios 5 is a definitely I would say I prefer it to the Adios 4 I think my favorite Adios is the Adios 1 boost um, principally because that actually fitted me lengthwise pretty well um, but I think this one, you know, if it wasn't for the next percent and the four percent before it, um, you know, that probably would be my go-to racing shoe now. But I think it's not going to be, I mean, obviously it's designed to be a marathon shoe, but I think, you know, in this day and age, you're almost giving away, you're not really giving away speed necessarily, but just sort of the, you know, the feeling on the, the cushioning under your feet. I did a run yesterday at about an hour at marathon pace in the next percent and, um, you know, it just felt like it was like a cushioned shoe, but I was just running quite fast in. Whereas these things, you kind of feel that, yeah, they're, they're not too bad, but they are a flat. And, you know, if you did a hard half marathon or even up to a marathon, then, you know, they, you'd really be struggling afterwards. But, you know, it's one of those sort of things where I'm not going to probably do it now because I haven't got, I've got other shoes which I would prefer. But um, I think these definitely have their place. I'm not just sort of buying it, just sort of wear it, wear it once and throw it away. Um, as I said, if I want to do some off-road 
sessions, part runs that aren't sort of tarmac-y then good. Um, and also just to have another one to, if it's a bit muddy, it's black, isn't it? Rather than the, um, the lighter colors of the next percent. So I hope that was useful as an initial uh, trial. I'll link in my um, videos when I ran a flat out lap on Watopia at 72 lap effectively. And a bit of the footage from the uh, Tour de Swift first uh, stage, which I um, hope some of you can join. Um, what else going to say about these shoes? Um, I think I've pretty much said it all now. I just want to have another look at the back. There's a slightly different profile on the back. There's not the um, the back of the heel here is more just the exposed um, white stuff rather than the um, continental rubber. So there is a bit of a difference, and this is a bit higher here, this sort of torsion system. So also this is a torsion system, but it's not quite as recessed as it is in the Edios 4. Um, but certainly, um, in the absence of any sort of um, amazing technologies from um, Adidas, so it's certainly a, an evolution of the shoe, not a radical one. It's very much true to its traditions. Um, and I think, you know, if you're looking for a lightweight, fairly lightweight, uh, low to the ground sort of racer that you can probably do some longer, tougher sessions in, um, or track sessions. That'd probably be good for track sessions as well. I think that would be good. But um, will, it, will it replace the next percent in my uh, packing order? Well, definitely not really, to be honest. Um, but um, not a bad idea. The other thing I was going to say that if you want to pick up a pair of these, um, Obviously, you can go to the Adidas website or other places, but I did find a site called runningheroes.com where if you link up your Strava and let it run for a few days, you start picking up rewards. And one of the rewards is 20% off online on Adidas shoes. So I'll link in how to get that. So that actually saved me 20% off 129. I think I paid about 104 for these in the end. So for the sake of linking up your Strava and let it run for a, a week or so, then that's not a bad 25 quid off. Um, and then suddenly a race a pair of new racing flats for 104 quid compared to what 240 for the next percent suddenly seem a lot better bet. Okay, so I think I'll wrap it up there and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. <clears throat>